Please welcome Jessica Robertson and Jeff Berman. I, I don't know how we're following Marley. I mean, oh my God, she's, can we get just another, yeah. I mean, I'm 51. I don't have half of that. Uh, it's incredible. I was working at Hot Topic at 7. Yeah, I don't it's, even, it's a whole other deal. Um, Anthony, can I get the clicker? Sorry, we, we, we need a, we, we, got, we got slides. How are we feeling? Thank you. We're good? good? Should we start? We should start. Let's start. Sports are a prism for culture. Sports are an accelerant of culture. Sports are culture. Athletes increasingly drive fashion, music, social norms, politics, and so much more. But if 18 months ago you'd map brands on axes of men's sport and culture and women's sport and culture, acknowledging that gender is not binary, but for the purpose of this exercise, you'd have seen a whole big cluster of brands at the intersection of sport and culture for men, right there. And a total lack of brands sitting at the equivalent intersection for women. Brands that recognize that women's sports move culture forward, that women athletes are incredible multi-hyphenates who influence the very culture we participate in and consume every single day. Enter together. Founded by four of the greatest athletes alive. And we don't have to qualify that by saying women athletes alive, four of the greatest athletes alive. Together as a media and commerce company that honors, celebrates, amplifies, and shines a spotlight on the extraordinary women who redefine what it means to be an athlete and cultural powerhouse in the modern era. And it's not just our four Avengers. There are thousands upon thousands upon thousands of women alongside them. It's Chantel Navarro, a teenage phenom who comes from a long line of champion male boxers and who wants to fulfill her family legacy of an Olympic gold medal. It's a collective of badass teenagers from the North Shore of Oahu who are pushing the boundaries for women in surf and who start in a YouTube series that we created. A YouTube series at Hello Sunshine has partnered with us to adapt. That adaptation will be coming to a subscription service you all subscribe to next year. It's also all 144 women of the WNBA who took on one of their owners. One of their owners who happened to be a United States Senator, and in the process, changed the direction of American democracy. My dad was like, you think four gold medals is badass? You just helped flip a Senate seat. Black Parade. They're featured in a documentary co-produced with Tracy Ellis Ross and WNBA players Sue Bird and Neka Ogwumake, which will also be coming to a streaming service next year. Historically, interest in women's sports has been cyclical. We see interest rise every few years with each Olympics that meant a new star, like Chloe Kim, or with every World Cup that captivates, in particular, America. Then that interest wanes. It isn't sustained as it should be, as it deserves to be, but more importantly, as it must be. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. We've seen investors. Mostly white male <laughs> investors. Mostly white male investors um, take an interest in women's sport as a charitable endeavor or simply because they're checking a box. Together as part of the vanguard of new companies, new leaders, new investors who are treating women's sports for what it actually is. It's a growth category. It's a growth category in an era of massive fragmentation, and it's an ecosystem of not just biz businesses, but big businesses to build. It's an opportunity to change the world, not just for these world-class athletes who deserve equal pay, equal recognition, and an equal playing field. It's an opportunity to change the world for our children, all of our children. The world our children will inherit needs to be a place where women's sports is not a charity, where it is not a cause. It is here, it is now, and it is very much the future. Yeah. yeah.
When Jeff was recruiting me to join the company, he asked me two very big questions. Will you move to LA? No, but fine. <laughs> I did. And second, what scares you the most about doing this? I'm always embarrassed to say this answer, and I feel especially vulnerable <laughs> saying this answer in this room. Um, I was worried that it wouldn't work, that no one would care. I was afraid we'd be a part of another boom-bust cycle that we see happening in women's sports. And as embarrassed as I am to say that on this stage, um, I'm also proud to say that I was radically wrong. As a journalist, as a storyteller, my instinct and my training is to go where the silence is. And that's where great stories lurk. So we went after the silence. And we've been making a lot of noise in that silence. At Together, we make content which attracts an audience, an incredibly large audience. For a sense of scale, we're at 2 million followers on TikTok in 18 months, making us one of the fastest growing consumer brands on that platform in that time frame. And we have an engagement rate on Instagram that's the envy of the industry, about five times higher than the brands we measure against. <laughs> At the center of that audience is our community, and at the center of that community are our most avid fans, a group of people who share our values, who amplify and market us, and who have helped tell us what our brand really is and also what our brand should be. When we launched together, I'm laughing about this because I remember this conversation, we said jokingly that we would know that we've broken through as a brand when we got our first tattoo. We set what we thought was an ambitious goal of seeing that happen. From someone who doesn't work at our company. Yeah. I have seven tattoos. I regret six of them, so it wasn't going to be me. Um, but six months after we launched, this slid into our DMs. <laughs> cool. I would have got it a little smaller. But <laughs> this to us was a symbol that we had built something that resonated so much so that someone used this as an expression of their own identity because finally they felt seen and a part of a bigger community. As a former boss of mine is fond of saying, it's easier to catch a wave than to create a wave. Together exists to do both. We are riding the wave that generations, I mean, literally generations of women before us initiated. And we're accelerating that wave with the stories that we're telling and the spotlights that we're shining. We have already doubled revenue year over year, and we have a plan to beat that again next year. Brands such as Buick, Google, and Nike are coming to us because they're buying into the vision, the community, and our relentless focus on mission. There is no more neutral. And we would argue there never was. Together isn't here to play it safe. We owe it to the women that we feature, their families, their communities, our community, to tell it like it is, and to show, literally show and make visible the power of what's possible. As we build our community, as we create more shows, as we sell more projects, you'll see us expanding into new businesses, new categories, and potentially new universes. For now, all we ask is that you like, subscribe, follow, shout from the rooftops that we're not just coming. We're already here, and we are just the tip of a very mighty spear. It's, I say this often, so Jeff has heard me say this for about three years now. It's not that women athletes and women's sports have been behind. It's that culture is finally catching up, and together is pouring fuel on that fire. We fundamentally believe that the old aphorism, if you want to go fast, go alone, and if you want to go long, go together, is wrong. We believe in going fast and long together. <laughs> We're thrilled to be on this journey, and we invite all of you guys to join us in that journey.
Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna steal thirty extra seconds because of some news from this morning. Given what we stand for and who we represent and our collective community, and I don't just mean those who love our brand, I mean the athletes that we also represent. We'd be remiss if we didn't say something on behalf of Brittany Griner, given the news that came out this morning, who's been wrongfully detained, and it was ruled this morning will spend nine years in a Russian prison. Um, we send our love and support to her family, her friends, her teammates, most of all, BG. We will not stop working until she is home safe. And we ask you guys to join us in that fight. And we have a specific call to action. So when we break for lunch, here's the ask. 202-224-3121. 202-224-3121. That is the number for the capital operator. They will route you to either your senators, ideally both of your senators, and your representative. And it's a simple message. If Brittany were an equivalent athlete on the men's side, she would be home already. It is time to put more and more pressure on the White House and the State Department to bring Brittany home now. 202-224-3121. I have it programmed in my favorites. I call every day about something. I encourage you to do the same. But today, this is today's call to action. So we thank you for your support and your help, and um, thank you for coming on this journey with us. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Go ahead, Pepper. What's up, Pepper? That's my girl. Pepper has made a huge impact as a sports journalist. Thank you, Krista. I was able to talk to Las Vegas Aces head coach Becky Hammond yesterday. We got to lock in. Absolutely. And this kid with those conversations is setting the basketball world on fire. I want to use this show to hopefully help inspire.